the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 How to listen to the voice of God. Let me read out to you from the book of Samuel. Book of Samuel. First book of Samuel, chapter 3. Chapter 3, verses 1 onwards. During the time, young Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli, a revelation of the Lord was uncommon and vision infrequent. One day, Eli was asleep in his usual place. His eyes had lately grown so weak that he could not see. The lamp of God was not extinguished, and Samuel was sleeping in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. The Lord called to Samuel, who answered, Here I am. He ran to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. I did not call you, Eli said. Go back to sleep. So he went back to sleep. Again the Lord called Samuel, who rose and went to Eli. Here I am, he said. You called me. But he answered, I did not call you, my son. Go back to sleep. At that time, Samuel was not familiar with the, with the Lord because the Lord had not revealed anything to him as yet. The Lord called Samuel again for the third time. Getting up and going to Eli, he said, Here I am. You called me. Then Eli understood that the Lord was calling the youth. So he said to Samuel, go to sleep. And if you are called again, reply, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. When Samuel went to sleep in his place, the Lord came and revealed his presence, calling out as before, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel answered, Speak, for your servant is listening. The Lord said to Samuel, I am about to do something in Israel, and that will cause the ears of everyone who hears to ring. And God spoke to Samuel. Hallelujah. 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 My dear friends, there's something beautiful here. God is speaking. God is calling. But man was not listening. Man is not able to hear and recognize the voice of God. And therefore, if you and I, we are not able to listen to the voice of God, it is not because God is not speaking. God is speaking, but we are not able to to listen. Let us come to that story of Samuel. Samuel was sleeping in the temple as we sleep in the church, do we? But this was at night. This was at night in the outer courts of the temple. The ministers used to sleep. Young Samuel was ministering to the Lord and he was sleeping in the outer court of the temple. And he heard the call, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel woke up, did not know who was calling. And Samuel ran to Eli, the elderly priest, sleeping on the other side. And Samuel asked, here I am, sir, did he call me? Eli said, my son, I did not call you. You must be dreaming. Go and lie down and sleep. It's only midnight. Sleep well. And Samuel went and lay down. The third time, Eli thought, ah, there should be something in it. God must be calling the boy. And Eli directed Samuel, 
my son if you hear the call again you must respond speak lord your servant is listening and this time samuel went and lay down not to sleep but to hear prepared to hear the call of god and god called and samuel answered speak lord your servant is listening and god spoke to samuel hallelujah 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 you know my dear sisters and brothers in verse 7 for samuel chapter 3 verse 7 there is a particular mention why was it that samuel not able to hear the voice of god we are told because samuel was not familiar samuel was not used to was not familiar with the voice of god that's why samuel was not able to recognize the voice of god i remember my own spiritual director point out to me this particular passage this was a few years ago in 1974 much before you were born perhaps much before your parents were born i was in the seminary studying for priesthood the last year of my seminary formation you know at the end of the seminary formation you are ordained a priest my rector my my rector called me and said to me augustine that's my name you are completing your priestly formation if you want you can be ordained a priest i told him oh sure i want to that's what i have been studying for all these years he said give me an application i asked him father tell me what am i to write he said to me write that you are called by god you want to be ordained a priest in the catholic church and you will be faithful to god till the end of your life i said oh sure father i will come back i went and took a piece of paper i began to write i began to write and i was writing i'm called by god and i am being trained i'm coming to the end of my priestly formation i want to be ordained a priest i will be faithful to god in the catholic church for all my lifetime i was writing but then my hands began to shiver i did not know why slowly i i realized my heart was beating fast and a question in my mind how do i know how do i know i am called by god how do i know and that that question shattered me i could not sign i could not sign that application i went to my spiritual director my spiritual director was a german priest i told him father i have a problem he said to me oh augustine i thought you're a man without problems or oh, no father i have a problem now i'm writing my application to be ordained a priest but i do not know whether i am called by god at all i'm in trouble i cannot sign my application i need to be truthful and genuine when i write an application to my authorities i do not know whether i am called by god and my spiritual director asked me agustin you have been heard god calling you i said no father i have been gone on the horse back like saint paul to fall down from the horse back and hear god calling me i have been gone fishing like saint peter saint peter who heard the call at the seashore i don't remember father i told him then very casually he said 
that means you are not called. I looked at him. It sounded very cruel. You know, I'm ending my priestly formation and my spiritual director is telling me this. You know, these Germans, Germans are very tough. They speak straight to you. But then it occurred to me, if I'm not called, fine, I will step back. I will step back. But then my spiritual director told me, Augustine, do not make another mistake. And he read out to me this particular passage from Samuel, for Samuel. And he said to me, look at this. The, the young man, Samuel, could not hear the call of God, not because God was not calling. Not because God was not calling, but because the young man was not familiar, was not familiar with the voice of God. He was not used to the voice of God. That's why he could not hear the voice of God. So I asked him, Father, what can I do? He said to me, Augustine, you have not prayed long enough, hard enough. Spend your time in prayer. I said to myself, that's fine. That sounds good. So I told my father, Rector, I have a problem and I need to pray. When Father Rector looked at me, he thought I really have a problem, so he allowed me. I went to pray. I was alone. I was alone in prayer in a room in a certain house nearby. And I started praying. I asked my spiritual director, Father, tell me, what am I to pray? He asked me, pray as Samuel prayed. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. The first three days, I was very drowsy. I was sleeping often. I was very hungry. I was very thirsty. But the fourth day onwards, I hardly felt any hunger. I hardly felt any thirst. I hardly felt any sleep. I began to enjoy my prayer. I was praying. And the fifth day, sixth day, something beautiful happened. I was praying. And I could see my Jesus. My Jesus just there in front of me. And I could hear a voice, a voice whispering to my heart and then echoing in my heart, you are precious to me. You are dear to me. I love you. As soon as I heard it, I realized this was Isaiah, the prophecy of Isaiah, chapter 43, chapter 43, verse 4. I knew that. And in my scripture classes, my professors have told me, this is what God spoke to Isaiah, the prophet. But here, there's no Isaiah. It is me. It's me and my Lord. My Lord whispering to my heart. I can, I can hear it so well, echoing in my heart. You are precious to me. You are dear to me. I love you. I heard it over and over again. And I saw my, my Jesus so clearly in front of me. I could hear the voice of my God so clearly. You are precious to me. You are dear to me. I love you. Hours together, I sat there listening to the voice of God, rejoicing, rejoicing in that beautiful experience of being loved by my God. It's after about seven hours that I got up from there. I went to my spiritual director. I told him, Father, this is what happened to me. He hugged me and told me, Augustine, this is a moment of your call. And I went to my room. One more day I prayed. I went to my room. I took that sheet of paper. Everything of it, that application that I was writing, everything of it sounded genuine. I know, I know I'm called by my God. I signed, I signed underneath. 
my hands did not shiver. 42 years now, my hands have not shivered. I have never regretted. I have never regretted. I have never regretted for having made that choice to become a priest of my God. All the time I have felt deep in my heart, I'm precious, I'm dear to my God. Hallelujah. 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 My dear sisters and brothers, I say it with a lot of humility. Not that I am a saint, far from it. But one thing, I know my God is faithful. Whenever I'm in trouble, whenever I'm misunderstood, whenever things go wrong with me, you know what I do? I close my door, I latch my door from inside. And I, I pray, Lord, speak. Your servant is listening. And once again, the same voice, the same face. So clearly, my God speaking to me. This is the joy of my life. The joy of seeing the face of my Jesus. The joy of listening to the voice of my God. My dear sisters and brothers, if you ask me, how did I see the face of my God? How did I hear the voice of my God? Not with these eyes. Not with these ears. You know, whatever we see with these eyes will vanish. When new faces come, when new things come before the eyes, the old sights disappear, vanish. Whatever we hear with these ears will vanish. Because nothing remains in our ears. But one thing, my dear friends, what we hear with our heart, what we hear with our heart, what we see with our heart will never vanish. It gets stuck to the heart so beautifully, so wonderfully that any time you want to hear that voice, to see that face, we will be able to do it because, because heart is real. What is seen with the heart, what is heard with the heart is really real. And this is what I'm inviting every one of you, every one of you to wait upon God today for, to listen to the voice of God, to hear the voice of God and to see the face of God. Why is it we are not able to listen to the voice of God? Why is it we are not able to see the face of God. Let me ask you, my dear sisters and brothers, can you hear Pope Francis speaking now? Not me. I'm not a Pope yet. Can you hear Pope Francis speaking now? You cannot. Is it because his voice is not here? He is speaking. His voice is here. You bring a radio, you bring a radio and keep it here and tune it to Vatican radio, you will hear the Pope speaking. And therefore, you cannot hear the Pope speaking not because the Pope is silent. No, no, not because the Pope is silent, but because we are not able to, we don't have the gadget, the right gadget in our hearts to listen to listen to the voice of the Pope. Can you hear Shah Rukh Khan dancing? Can you see Shah Rukh Khan dancing? You cannot see, can you? Is it because he is not dancing? He's dancing all over the place. But because there's no gadget, bring a television set here. Bring a television set here and tune it to a particular station, you will see Shah Rukh Khan dancing. This is our problem. We don't have the right preparation. Samuel was not familiar. Samuel was not familiar with the voice of God to listen to the voice of God. Samuel was not used to, used to listen to the voice of God. What's needed for us, my dear friends, is to wait upon God. As Samuel waited, first time, second time, third time, Samuel was sleeping. 
But the fourth time, when Samuel went and lay down to listen, to hear, really listen to the voice of God, he was able to listen to God's voice. Let us prepare our hearts. Prepare our hearts to listen to God speaking to our hearts. It is to our hearts that God speaks. And Jesus, Jesus said it. Jesus said it, John chapter 15, John chapter 15, verse 11. Jesus said, I said these things, I said these things that my joy may be in your heart and that your joy may be complete to the fullness of our joy. At every moment of our sadness, to the fullness of our joy, at every moment we are upset, at every moment we are broken, we are shattered. Jesus, God is speaking. I said these things, that my joy may be in your heart and that your joy may be complete, your joy may be full. Again, again, prophet Ezekiel speaks. Prophet Ezekiel chapter 3, chapter 3, verse 3, prophet says, I saw the word, the word of God. I took it and I ate it and the word of God became sweet, sweet like honey in my heart, so sweet like honey in my heart. It was in the heart of the prophet that the word of God became sweet like honey. Again, the psalmist tells us, Psalm 119, Psalm 119, verse 92, the psalmist tells us, O oh God, if your word had not become the joy of my heart, if your word had not become the joy of my heart, I would have perished in my misery. If your word had not become the delight, the delight of my heart, I would have perished in my misery. So powerful, so powerful was the word of God, was the listening of the word of God. How powerful, it is so powerful, it could dispel the darkness of misery. I would have perished in my misery. I would have perished in my misery if your word had not become the delight of my heart. So delightful, so joyful is the listening to the word of God. And this is what we want to listen to. My dear friends, let us understand God's love is so tangible, much more tangible than any love in this world. God's presence is so real, more real than any presence of anyone to us because God is our creator. God loves you and me much more than anyone on this earth loves us. And God has said it. God has so beautifully said it. My dear friends, Jesus said, Matthew 10, 30, Matthew chapter 10, verse 30, Jesus said, even our hair, even our hair of your head is all counted. What does Jesus mean? So real, so great is the love of our God that even a little detail, even that silly detail of a hair falling from our head is not forgotten by God. I have counted, I have counted. And again, God said, Psalm, Psalm 56, 8, Psalm 56, 8, God said, I have counted your afflictions. I have counted your afflictions. I have collected your tears in my heart. I have collected your tears in my heart. Every drop of tear that welled up in our eyes is seen. Is seen, is collected in the heart of our God. Every hair that fell from our head is all counted by the Lord. How does God speak? God does not speak through the microphone, no. God does not speak through the microphone. I speak through the microphone because I don't know you. 
I know some of you by face, some of you by name. Even if I know you, I do not know what's happening to you now. But God knows every single detail what's happening to you and to me. God knows it all. God is aware. God is concerned. God is concerned about everything happening to us. This God, when this God speaks, He will not speak to our ears. He will speak to our hearts. I remember when I was in the seminary, I was all the time waiting for the letter of my dad. My dad was having the problem of Parkinson's, so his hands were shivering. He could not write much, only a few lines. But as soon as I see the address on the inland, on top of the inland, I would know it's my dad writing. And the moment I get that letter in my hands, I'm so thrilled. Someone who knows me, someone who loves me, someone who cares for me, someone who is concerned about every single detail of my life, my dad. My dad is writing to me. And there is a message for me, a special message. But there's one thing, my dear friends, almost every month my dad will write. But almost every month it will be the same thing. Your mom is having a cold or a, a agriculture work is going on or the climate here, there's no much of rain this year, something or other, very simple things, very simple matter of fact things. But then it's my dad writing to me, every word has a special meaning, every word. At times, when I look at that letter, I would see certain words standing out in a bright light. Certain words standing out in a bright light when he writes about my mother, about my brothers, about my sisters. Certain letters standing out in a bright light. And I know my dad has got a special message for me. My dad is speaking to me. My dad has something special to tell me. I'm sure, my dear friends, you have had this experience. When you read the Bible, when you read the Bible, you have had this experience. Certain verse, perhaps a certain phrase standing out in a bright light, in a bright light. You look at it, and the more you look at it, the more bright that verse the more bright that word, that phrase shines before you. But dear friends, when that happens, you must know God has got a message. God has got a special message to give you. You should not let it go. Dwell on that word like children eating chocolate. Why children? Even we, right? When we put the chocolate in our mouth, do we gulp it down? You waste the chocolate, right? If you gulp it down, you slowly move the tongue. Slowly move the tongue and let all that sweetness, all that sweetness of the chocolate enter into your mouth so that you don't waste, you don't waste any bit of sweetness in the chocolate. Very slowly, you will move your tongue, let it all flow into your mouth. But dear friends, when, when a certain word, a certain phrase, a certain verse becomes really bright for you, you should know God wants to speak to you. God is waiting to give you a message. Dwell on it. Look at it. Read it again, again and again, and learn it by heart. That will be a message. And something, something or other, something or other happening to you to make you sad that day, to make you upset, to make you angry on that day. At that moment, 
that particular verse will come back to you. Come back to you because God has spoken to you. God has given you a warning. God has comforted you. Already before a distressing thing happens to you, that word will come back to you because God cares. God cares for every single detail, for every silly thing that happens to us. God gives us a warning. God gives us a comfort that we may not be distressed when wrong things happen to us, wrong things are bound to happen to us in our life. But God has given us a warning. God has comforted our heart that we do not lose our heart, that we are not lost in such experiences of our life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. St. Augustine, my dear friends, St. Augustine has said something very special. St. Augustine said that the Bible, the Word of God, the Bible is a love letter. Love letter God has written. God has written to every one of us, to me personally. Love letter to you make copies and send to many people unless you, you're a fraud. If you're a fraud, you might do that. We don't do that. Love letter is special. I know my friend. I know my friend. I know what she or he cares for. I know his trouble, his problem. I am writing to him. I'm writing to him. I'm writing to her. That's very personal. Love letter is very personal. Same way, the Bible is very personal. God has written to me personally, and that is a word. That's a message that comforts me, a message that heals me, that mess a message that is there for me at every moment of my life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Dear friends, a few months ago, a mother brought her daughter to me. The mother was very upset. The daughter looked very cool. And the mother said to me, my daughter is very unmanageable. She has become very unmanageable. And she doesn't go for her classes in time. She does not study anymore. She was a bright student. In the high school, she got very high marks. She always scored very high marks in the high school. But Father, she's come to the college. With a lot of trouble, we got admission in the college. Now she does not care to study. She's busy with mobile phones. She's busy with video games. She never cares to listen to us. She's very upset. For some reason, my daughter is very disturbed. So I wanted to speak to that young lady. And I sent the mother out of my room. I was speaking to her. She did not want to speak to me because she looked uh, very unconcerned, very unconcerned. I, I said, my sister, Shall I pray for you? I prayed for her. I prayed for her. And I got a message from the Lord. I got a message from the Lord. And the message was a vision that I got. I asked her, my sister, uh, can I speak to you openly? She, she, she was sort of uh, uh, amazed. Uh, I asked her, can I speak to you openly? She said, Father, please, what happened to you? On a Saturday evening, a Saturday evening, what happened to you when you were just eight years old? She thought for a moment she looked very cool in the beginning, and after some time, she burst out crying. 
burst out crying. And she asked me, Father, how did you know that? I told her, my sister, I don't know anything. I just know this. That something terrible happened to you. Something terrible happened to you when you were eight years old on a Saturday evening. And that is really shattered your life. And she continued crying. I told her, my sister, God has revealed that event to me, not to disturb you, but to take away that disturbance from your heart. That particular event has made you very upset. That event is creating problem for you. In the midst of tears, she said to me, Father, will you tell this to anyone? I said, no. I said, no. I haven't told you the name, have I? I haven't told you the, the place. You wouldn't, you wouldn't imagine who that person is. I told her, no. And she said to me, Father, my uncle, when my dad and mom had gone to the church for Sunday evening mass, I was alone in my room. My uncle came and he began to tempt me. And finally, he sexually abused me. I could not resist. I did not know what was happening. He said to me, there's nothing wrong with it, but I began to feel everything of it was wrong. And he, at the end of it all, he said to me, if you tell this to your dad and mom, I will kill you. And this girl began to be frightened. The uncle went away. He began to be frightened. She began to be frightened and very upset. She couldn't tell anything. Um, the dad and mom came back, prepared supper, and called her for supper. She could not go for supper. She said, I'm not hungry. I want to sleep. She could not sleep at that night. She never slept after that, really. She felt something wrong has happened to me. She felt so guilty. She felt so sad. She felt so angry. She felt so isolated. But then she really did not know what it was all about. She was too young to understand, just eight years old. She did not know what it all meant. But one thing she knew, something terrible, something terrible had gone wrong with her. She couldn't tell this to anyone. She couldn't tell this to the dad and mom. But then she studied. It did not occur to her very much. But then something more terrible happened when she completed her um, high school. She went to the college uncle suddenly died of a car accident. And she had prayed before as a child. Oh God, I can't do anything to my uncle. Father, God, you teach him a lesson. She prayed that God teach him a lesson. And now she began to think God was doing it to him. God was uh, teaching him a lesson by killing him by road accident. At the same time, that terrible thing of sexual abuse, that thing began to bother her and she began to be very rebellious and she said to herself, I have no chance in life. God who punished my uncle will punish me also. But she couldn't tell this to anyone. She was suffocating. She couldn't sleep well. She was all upset all the time and angry at the dad and mom. She, she didn't want to go to church. She said, because my mother and father went to the church on Saturday evening, 
That's when, that's why it happened to me. She was all upset. She was in a mess. She revealed everything to me. I told her, my sister, you are too young. You are too young to understand. And therefore, it is not your mistake. It is not your mistake. Well, your uncle, he may have committed a sin. But then, do not imagine God has punished your uncle. Because it's not, it is not a punishing God whom Jesus came to reveal to us. Jesus came to reveal to us a God who loves us to such a great extent that he sent his only son to die for us. Therefore, for you, it is not a sin. For you, it is nothing wrong. Something happened to your body, but you're not hurt, but your, your heart is broken. But my child, don't worry. God is there for you. God will heal your heart. And I told her, let me open the Bible and read. God wants to give you a message. And I prayed. I prayed for her. I asked God to give, give us a message. Because my sister, she was so sad. She was so shattered. She was in, again in tears. I opened the Bible. What I got was Zachariah, the prophecy of Zachariah. Zachariah chapter 2. And I, I went on reading chapter 2. Zachariah chapter 2. When I came to verse 8, I was, I was struck by the love of my God. And the verse 8 was this. The Lord God says, the Lord God says, you are the apple of my eye. You are the apple of my eye. He who hurts you shall know this. He's hurting the apple of my eye. The Lord God says, you are the apple of my eye. He who hurts you shall know that. He's hurting the apple of my eye. I told her, my sister, this is a message God is giving you. I prayed for you. I prayed for you. I opened the Bible, and this is the message God is giving you. Who are you? The Lord is telling you who you are. You are the apple of the eye of God. You are so precious to God. God calls you the apple of his eye. When I said this, she burst out crying again. She said, Father, no, it cannot be for me because I'm a bad girl. Everybody says I'm a bad girl. My parents say this. In the school, the teachers, in the college, the teachers say this. Everybody says I'm a bad girl. My friends say this. I'm a bad girl. I told her, no. God has spoken. God has spoken to you. This is a message for you. God is giving you a message. You are precious. You are dear to God. How precious are you? As the apple of the eye of God. Nothing wrong has happened to you. It's not your mistake. But then I told her, my child, you, you have misunderstood everything. Of course, you, what your uncle did was something very wrong. But God has not punished your uncle. That accident was only um, just an accident. An accident is always an accident, not pre-planned. But you, he did something terrible to you. But you are not bad. Don't feel guilty. Don't feel ashamed. God wants, God wants you to come up in life, to grow, because you are so dear to God. You're so dear in the eyes of God. 
God wants you to be rooted and grounded in this experience. I prayed for her. I prayed for her with that word, that word from the Bible, what God has spoken. At one time, she could hear it in her heart. But I was praying for her. She could hear it in her heart. God speaking to her, you are the apple of my eye. He who hurts you shall know that. He's hurting the apple of my eye. Again, she cried. This time, the tears were not tears of sadness, but tears of joy. Because the word of God has spoken to her. The word of God has changed her. It's the word of God that changes our lives. Because God speaks. There is power. As Jesus said, my word is spirit. My word is spirit and life. The word of God gives us life. Jesus said, I have spoken. What has Jesus spoken for? I have spoken that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. Every word spoken by Jesus is for this purpose, that the joy of Jesus may flow into us and our joy may be complete. Again, what Ezekiel said, I found the word, I ate it, that word became like honey, honey in my heart, in my mouth. I told her, my sister, God has spoken to you. God has spoken to you for this purpose. I told her, you would have perished in your misery if, if the word of God had not become the delight of your heart. Psalm 119, verse 92. The word of God has become the delight of your heart. That's why you're able to feel the joy in your heart. She began to be so happy. In half an hour time, this girl who, was, who came to my room indifferent and rebellious and cold became so warm in her heart for the love of God. And she went back joyfully home with her mother. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Every one of us, something wrong has happened to every one of us. We are hurt. We are hurt by our parents because we thought our parents did not love us, did not care for us enough. People spoke ill about us. And even the dearest, dearest, the nearest have hurt us very badly. You know what, my dear friends? Every love, every love in this world is bound to hurt. You know why? Because we are sinful. All of us are sinful. As sinners, we are bound to hurt others. And others are bound to hurt us. However dear, however precious others are to us, they are bound to hurt us. Where do we find the healing? The healing for our hurts. The healing for our hearts is the word of God. God said, I send my word. I send my word and heal your disease, your hearts. And that's what God is speaking. God is going to speak to us. God is going to speak to our hearts. And we must make it a daily experience. Open the Bible and read. After having prayed to the Holy Spirit and our day-to-day -day hurts will be healed by the fullness of love flowing into our hearts from God's love.